Hey there, I'm Marcy Billen with Rui Team Realty and Keller Williams Smolenix here in Norman, Oklahoma. And I'm your guide to help you navigate the world of real estate here in Oklahoma. In several videos before I've mentioned some seller paid closing costs or the possibility of closing costs paid for by the seller if you're purchasing a home. And so that's what I wanted to cover in today's video. Have you subscribed to our channel? Go ahead and hit subscribe and also the bell so that way you don't miss anything. I have new videos every Thursday. So what are seller paid closing costs? Well, first of all, what are closing costs in general? Well, there are several um, sections of fees on your closing costs um, sort of spreadsheet. Of course, you're gonna have the title company, which is where we close on houses here in Oklahoma. Um, in other states, it may be called escrow, but we typically use the word title company and title representative to explain that. And then other fees, like if you're getting a loan, then you're gonna have some lender fees. So they charge money to close that loan for you. And then you'll definitely have prepaid costs if you're getting a loan as well. Prepaid costs are insurance, taxes, and interest that you have to pay upfront in order to close on the house. And those are for your lender to make sure that you have reserves for that. So yes, it does cost more than just a down payment to actually purchase a home. If no one has walked you through the overview of the home buying process, you may wanna check out this video, which is the overview of the home buying process as I typically explain in person. Okay, so how much can a seller pay for when it comes to closing costs whenever you're purchasing a house? That's the question, right? How much money can you get out of a seller? Well, if you're getting a VA loan or an FHA loan, then you can actually get the seller to pay up to 6% of the total purchase price. Now that's um, not expected of the seller necessarily. That is the law. Like that's the most that a buyer can get from a seller if they're getting a VA loan or an FHA loan. So as a home buyer, you're not gonna need 6% most likely of the total purchase price. So 6% of $200,000, I mean, we're talking about $12,000 here. Typically your closing costs on a $200,000 house in Oklahoma is gonna be anywhere from $6,000 to $8,000. Now you ask like, why, did, why is it so varied? Like, why am I saying $6,000 to $8,000? Well, what really makes that change is the prepaid costs. If you're looking at how much money you're gonna need um, to close on a house. Of course, lender fees and title fees make a difference as well, but those are slightly more set than let's say a prepaid cost, which is like how much insurance you're gonna need on the house, which can vary greatly depending on where you are and all these other different things about the house. And of course, your taxes are gonna vary greatly too, depending on the county and the city. And no, if you ask for the full 6%, you only need $6,000. Let's say on a $200,000 house, you ask for $12,000 and the seller somehow magically gives that to you, but you only need $6,000. You cannot take $6,000 home with you from the closing table in your pocket. They do not do that. Banks will not allow that. So we have to be very careful to only ask for the amount of money that we absolutely need on um, the closing cost sheet for closing costs and prepaids. And as a realtor, that's my job to make sure that I only ask for as much as you need. All right, so on a conventional loan. So I'm only talking about three different types of loans, loans here, FHA, uh, VA, and conventional. We have some others that of course are floating around in Oklahoma. These are the ones that I deal with the most. Um, some others that you may run into are um, a HUD 184, which is a Native American loan. We do those quite often here in Oklahoma as well. And then of course you may run into a USDA, which is a whole other different type of loan, which I will definitely cover in another video because it's a great way to get into a house with no money out of your pocket. So on a conventional loan. So a conventional loan is only allowed to ask um, 3% from the seller in seller paid closing costs. Well, I forgot to say, like a lot of buyers may not think that the seller actually has costs. Well, the seller does have costs to close on their house as well. They're not as high as buying a house, um, but that's because when you're closing on a house, you don't, and you're selling it, you don't have those lender fees where if you're getting a new loan, you're gonna have lender fees. So that's one of the main differences. They also have some different taxes and stuff that they have to pay for whenever they sell a house. So typically on a conventional loan, you can only ask for up to 3% of the total purchase price 
towards your closing costs as the buyer. So that's seller paid closing costs. So the seller would give you money to pay for your closing costs. And you can only ask for up to 3%. Now there are exceptions to this. Um, if you put enough money down on a conventional loan, then you can ask up to 6%. However, typically people that have a conventional loan and can put more money down, I typically ask them to pay their own closing costs um, because if you don't, then the seller may try to wrap those costs into the price. And we've been seeing that happen a lot lately, especially at lower price ranges this happens. And you know, the whole idea is you want to get to the closing table with as much, with as little money out of your pocket as possible. I mean, right? Like that's ideal because you're moving into a new house and you have a lot of expenses that may come up. So, but if you have some cash saved, maybe even up to 20%, is it, um, is it necessary to really ask for the seller to pay for your closing costs? Because this is what I see happen as a real estate agent. And I negotiate this way whenever I'm representing someone who's actually selling a house. So let's say the house costs $200,000. So you put in an offer for $200,000 and you ask the seller to pay for $5,000 in closing costs. For you so for the seller that amount that they're looking at for the total purchase price is $195,000 and in our market especially at this lower price point we're not really seeing sellers wanting to give up that much money of course it's different if we're in a market where we're heavily saturated with affordable housing and there's a ton of stuff on the market but that is often not the case here in Oklahoma especially in the lower price ranges now if we're talking 300,000, 400,000, 500,000, that's a totally different animal. And of course, you're gonna be talking about a much higher closing cost price. And then um, your down payment, of course, is more. So there's a lot more that we can do with that negotiating because there are less buyers in those price ranges. So if you have the money to pay for your closing costs, is it worth it to actually ask the seller to pay for your closing costs? Well, in a market where we don't have enough affordable homes in the market, um, you may not want to do that because what will end up happening is the seller may negotiate like this. Let's say you have a, you want to buy a house that's $200,000 and the closing costs that you want to ask from the seller is $5,000. Well, the seller most likely in a really heavy seller's market, meaning that they know that they can get the money that they want and need, they may come back and say they want the purchase price to be $205,000 and they'll pay your closing costs for $5,000. Now, this doesn't make a huge difference on your monthly payment. It's all about, do you want that higher purchase price and then more money in your pocket at closing, which could work out really well for you, or would you rather just pay the money for the house for the closing costs and then have that lower price on the house, which would be $200,000 course it's a very you know simple way of putting it so is it possible to bring absolutely no money to the table when you're purchasing a house you may have heard people talk about this and the answer is yes it could be possible you could get a grant to pay for your down payment and then have the seller pay for all of your closing costs so I've had two instances this year where my buyers have had to bring either less than $1,000 to the closing table in order to purchase their house, or they actually got to take money home because they had earnest money that they had paid in, which is their deposit money, and then they had everything paid for um, for their down payment and then their closing costs, and so then they got to take their earnest money or their deposit money back home. So this is a possibility. However, you may have to make um, some sacrifices in order to do that. And you definitely need to check with a lender to make sure that you could do that in terms of grants and different loans that may be available to you. So how are these closing costs paid by the seller negotiated? Well, we actually negotiate them whenever we're putting in the initial terms of the offer. So like I said, you offer $200,000, you ask for $5,000 of closing costs and then, you know, negotiate from there or however much money we're talking about and making it very simple in those terms of negotiation. We can also um, attempt to ask for them during the repair period of a contract and then maybe sometimes during the appraisal period of a contract, depending on if the appraisal is low or not. Is it normal for the seller to pay closing costs for the buyer? I've covered this a little bit already. 
Yes, it is, depending on if the home has multiple offers. If the home has multiple offers, typically it's not possible for you to ask for a bunch of costs to be paid for by the seller at that point because they're looking at the best option for them and typically that does not include paying closing costs for a buyer unless you really move the price up, which often is not possible um, because of appraisals. In certain price ranges, it's absolutely normal for the seller to pay buyer's closing costs. Um, that is a lot of times neighborhood by neighborhood and that's something that your realtor can actually look up for you. And I do that quite often whenever I'm putting in offers and whenever I'm selling houses. Another way that I can typically tell if it's gonna be easy for us to get closing costs paid for by the seller is if the home has been on the market a while because um, we know that they may be more open to negotiating at that point because they haven't had a good offer or haven't been able to close an offer on the house. Do you have more questions? Go ahead and drop those questions in the comments below. My contact information is also linked in the description and I also have my home buying packet down there which you can download for free to get an overview of the home buying process.